Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 271, and yeah, things went a little weird this time. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, from Cleverly Blonde, we have wingames backslash casino backslash call underscore it. I'm gonna guess some kind of card game of some kind? A name like Call It? So, Call It. Um, all we have is an executable that is very small. <laughs> well, for a Windows program. So, file id.dis, Call It, a computerized coin toss for Windows. Let's you choose heads or tails and flips a coin to see if you win or lose. Uh... Is that literally all this is? Okay, so if we say heads, okay, it's literally a coin flipping program, which apparently costs $10 for the source code. <laughs> okay, does it at least maximize? No, of course it doesn't. Why would it? This is all it does. Since that went really quickly, Cleverly Blonde gets an extra dig. Win games backslash comp backslash 3DXW125A. Okay, hopefully this one has a little more meat on it than that. <laughs> uh, 3DXW125A. Okay, it's bigger executable. That's a good sign. Um, we got a write file here. Documentation for cyberspace crossword puzzle and cyberspace cruiser from Ivory Tower Software. Okay. A three-dimensional crossword puzzle is difficult to do on paper. This new game type is made possible by the Cyberspace Cruiser Engine, which lets a user maneuver through 3D space to see all sides of the puzzle structure. When you get in range of a, the puzzle structure, start play by clicking the Start Puzzle button, and simply click on a cell and key in a letter. Clues are shown as applicable in the text box in the lower right corner of the window. Huh. So is this going to be like a... Yeah, this sounds like it's going to be a crossword that takes place in three dimensions as opposed to two. That could be pretty interesting depending on how this is done, but we'll see in a second. Oh, and it actually looks like we have freeware here. I wasn't expecting a program like this to be freeware. Heck, crossword puzzle type stuff is usually charged an arm and a leg for, those kind, for this kind of stuff, but I guess not this time. Of course, the only trick given that this is freeware, is that it might not be that good. <laughs> so let's find out here. Okay, so we got a fixed window, center screen. So welcome to cyberspace. The crossword puzzle is straight ahead. Use the vertical scroll bar to the right of the viewport to move around. Okay, so you can either hold it down. It doesn't automatically scroll, unfortunately. You are in the crosswords puzzle puzzle space. Press start puzzle to play. Okay, so that's interesting. So can we actually... Okay, we can indeed change the way we're looking at it. Sort of. These are some weird angles that it's giving us. Okay, so not a lot going on on the about screen here. Still says Ivory Tower Software, so no specific people yet. And then doesn't have an actual help system thing, so it's just doing some basic help there. We got some color options. So I guess we want to make this look um, different. <laughs> oh, we got a kind of a cobalt blue thing going on there. Or we can make it look like a Mac. Well, sort of. Um, let's go with the green. Oh, wow. So the fine position controls here are if you want to move, like, really slowly. Because <laughs> it only goes one at a time. I don't know why you would want to do that, but it's an option. <laughs> um, real estate offer? 
Now human beings can own virtual real estate and cyberspace. Be the first in your neighborhood to own a billion cubic CLU volume at a prestigious short integer address in cyberspace. You'll receive a title deed to your virtual property and a disc with the latest version of Cyberspace Cruiser, which will include your name in your private volume of cyberspace. In addition, all future versions and uploads of Cyberspace Cruiser will include your private volume with your name in it makes a great gift only $40. These coveted low addresses won't be available forever, so act now. Print the order form for ordering information, structures and security measures for your property are available. This sounds like something out of like a freaking modern day metaverse thing. <laughs> okay, one rant about the metaverse later. Um, start puzzle. Use keyboard to type the letter in the current cell. Click with the mouse on a cell to make sure it's the current cell. Any clue for the cell will appear in the box in the lower right corner. Okay then. So like one thing is, I, I can't really tell where the cells are supposed to be at the moment. Like it would be nice if I could like shift the puzzle this way, but I can't. I've only got rotational controls here and then movement in and out. So, like, it's confusing to me whether there's anything, like, between these cells or not. Like, it doesn't look like it. So, anyways, this one says, across is a big name in computers, and down is a big name in PC microprocessors. Okay, so since it's two computer-related things, they both have to start with the, and both of them start with the same letter. That's probably going to be, the microprocessor thing is definitely going to be Intel. So, let's type in I-N-T-E-L. And then down is going to be IBM. Like, I can't even tell if that cell's, cell's highlighted selected, s highlighted properly. Pretty sure it is. Okay. So one thing I'm not liking right now is the fact that the controls are very limited to, in terms of your, in terms of your actual movement through 3D space. The other thing too is that the letters don't turn to face you. They're stuck in their fixed positions with inside, within their cells. So that actually makes it surprisingly difficult to read what's in there. Like the way I was envisioning this before we actually started the program was that the cell, was that the cells would actually have the letters floating inside them and that the letters would be written over top of whatever cell structure you've got and that you'd have better controls than this. So yeah, this puzzle seems to be regarding computerized stuff, because now we've got big name in software and big name in Mac microprocessors. So across, big name in software is going to probably be Microsoft. So Microsoft. And then down is actually going to be Motorola. So Motor, whoops. Uh, there we go. R O L A. Wait, across La La Land? What? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Okay, so that's gonna be an A, I guess? I don't know. And uh, this one here says CEO of big name in software or young billionaire. Um, it's probably, probably Bill Gates. So, G, um, Wait, what just happened? Oh, that's interesting. If you double click, it'll move the camera to point towards. Interesting. Okay, so. Uh, air and view pick mouse down overflow? What? <laughs> Did I literally click so much that it's now broken? <laughs> but I was just about to I was just about to finish this thing. <laughs> and now I can't click on the thing anymore. <laughs> oh wow, I think this is the first time I've ever encountered a program that actually runs into a memory issue if you click too many times. <laughs> Well, that was Cyberspace Crossword. Um, an interesting idea. The execution is, like, it looks neat. And I have noticed, like, if you take a look at the letters in Intel, it's actually changing depending, 
on where the camera is in rel relative position to it. So it's not like this doesn't work. It's that this is very rough feeling. Your 3D controls are not that good. And, oh, and I can suddenly click again. Uh, what? <laughs> this wasn't working a second ago. <laughs> Uh, okay, fine. You can make me finish this puzzle. Whatever. G A T E. Congratulations, you solved level one. Uh. So guess what? There's more to this puzzle, <laughs> and this one's a lot bigger, and also a lot harder to navigate through because again these the, these 3d controls are not good yeah cyberspace crossword neat idea but very rough feeling with poor camera controls so it's a start and given the fact that it's free like it's a neat thing to try but yeah i'd be hoping that there'd be something more advanced than this nowadays next up alex dug up dos games backslash cards backslash std poker there's a distasteful strip poker joke in there, but I'm not going to make it. Um, actually, <laughs> that's a very small, very small file we're working with there. Poker.com, 47k, let's, let's just going to run it. Welcome to the Stud Poker Parlor. Yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting STD to stand for. Because there's like five card stud, seven card stud, etc. So, R for reverse color setting. Q reverses quiet option, so we can select low skill, average skill, high skill, aggressive skill. Or no, wait, styles. Aggressive styles, in between styles, and conservative styles. 40 column width, 80 column width, exit the parlor. Okay, so currently selected, so we can choose between no color or no sound. Um, hmm. Now, is there any advantage to going with 80 columns, or it doesn't actually... Oh, whoops, that was exit. <laughs> uh, go back in. Uh, let's just quickly check to see if there's like some differences with the 80 column mode. Otherwise, we'll just leave it on 40 column. So to actually start, we press what? Escape? Okay, that's a weird way to start. Okay, so there does seem to be some... It does seem to be different in 80 column compared to 40 column because this would not fit on a 40 column screen. Um, the game is either five or seven card stud. With We each start with the same bankroll. I'm always dealer, but I'm fair. Both players ante on each hand. We must have money to bet or raise, but we can always call the go, or go light. <laughs> okay. And there's also a more info button, so that you can see the some of the differences here. And then F6 is rank of hands. So, high card, one pair, two pairs, three of a kind, straight flush, full house, four of a kind, straight flush. Yep, that's about what I was expecting. So, let's do seven card, because I find that tends to work out better than five card. Um, bankroll 100, no pot limit, anti want. Yeah, let's just leave it all the same. Maximum raise is three. Um, escape to accept all values and start play. Anti up and good luck. Okay, so we've got a nine of something. It's actually really hard to see those dark blue on black on my screen right now because I'm recording this in the middle of the day. I think those are clubs. Okay, so I've actually gone into my graphics driver settings of all things so that I can temporarily jack up the gamma. And yes, those are clubs. <laughs> Again, it's really bright in here and it's hard to see those that dark blue on black. Um, especially given the difference that the spades and the club characters on this graph standard character set are very difficult to tell the difference between, just at a gl quick glance. Um, anyways, so I have <laughs> next to nothing. Um, 150 is his bet. Um, yeah, check call is F1. So we'll call that. $3 is his bet. Yeah, I'll call that. Now he's got it going for a... Hmm. He keeps bringing his bet... He keeps raising his bet up. Like, I've got a pair of nines, but that's about it. No, I'm still going to call. 
Actually, I just noticed here that the um, the clubs and the spades are actually in different columns. So that actually kind of helps for telling which is which. So that's actually pretty clever that it does that. Um, I still think I've got the computer beat, so I'm just going to bet the maximum again. Yep, that'll do it. I've got two pair and the computer's got a pair. So new hand, let's do a new hand. Okay, starting with three spades is pretty nice. Um, let's start with a $3 bet. Calls, two queens, and they're both showing. So, hmm, no, I'm just gonna bet the maximum, or wrong key. Yep, <laughs> I, had a feel I had a feeling anything I bet at that point was gonna send the computer out of that. So, do another one. Uh, I don't like where this is going. Jack, nine, deuce, and he's betting 250. Um, I'm just immediately folding this one. <laughs> yeah, no guts. Yeah, not with the, not with that happening. Um, I think I'm just going to bet the... Or actually, I'm going to check this. Let's see if he bets anything. Two dollars? Okay, I'll call that. He's showing two deuces... And yet is betting one? Well, you know, I've actually got two diamonds showing. So I could probably trick the computer into thinking that I've got like a really good flush potential going. So I'm going to bet. He bet one. So I'm actually going to raise that by four. And now I think I'm actually going to bet the maximum. So max. Okay. I had a funny feeling that if I bet the max there that I was going to get him to get the computer to fold there because sure I've only got one pair that's a pair of fours which is better than his pair of deuces but the thing is when that five showed up I can potentially fool a computer into thinking after all that checking that I was finally getting like a really good hand going you know I get kind of get the impression here that the AI is actually behaving pretty realistically which that's actually kind of impressive for a game this old so yeah that was stud poker um, this game plays pretty decently for what it is. It's basically a five or seven card stud poker game that you play against the computer. I guess the only doubt drawback is that it is one on one. It's not um multiple multiple players or anything like that, which you know for a nineteen for mid eighties game, I wouldn't expect too much out of something like this. So yeah, this one actually plays perfectly fine for its age. Next up we have a team dig from Richard Ward and Matthew Belshin. Win games backslash comp backslash button. Uh, I'm kind of worried this is just gonna, just gonna be like a button that you push and nothing more. But let's find out. Button. Yeah, it's a screensaver. Oh boy. Okay. What's the right file say? Command button screensaver. Free square screensaver for Windows. Fills the screen up with 200 OK buttons. <laughs> oh, by an Adolfo Garcia? Adolfo? Something like that. Oh boy. Okay, so file, copy, to C prompt, Windows. Let's see how this runs. Program manager, um, control panel, desktop, where is it? Command buttons. So, maximum number of buttons from 1 to 100, 100, okay, test. This is literally all it does. And you can't even click them, because the moment you move the mouse, it exits the screensaver. <laughs> so yeah, this isn't much of a screensaver, unless you want to have the word OK burned into a million positions in your monitor. So since that went pretty fast, Richard Ward and Matthew Belshin are getting extra digs. Win games backslash comp backslash decoax is Richard Ward's next one. I swear, this comp folder has some of the weakest programs in it. <laughs> um, although I guess we did see that 3D crossword just now, didn't we? Um, okay, so decoax. What have we got? Um, it's another screensaver. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Uh, anything in the setup? 
Okay, we got a message. This disc installs a Diet Coke screensaver named Diet Coke Animations, which probably has no affiliation to the Coca-Cola company whatsoever, which is probably why it's distributed as freeware. And yet, yeah, neither the Coca-Cola company nor anyone else who has been involved in the creation, production, or delivery of this product shall be liable for any direct, indirect, consequential, or incidental damages, including damages for loss or business profits, business interruption, loss of business information, and the like, arising out of the use or inability to use such product. This probably shouldn't exist, but whatever. Decoke screens. Oh, wait, we've got an executable. Let's just run that. What does it do? Uh, this is a screensaver? <laughs> okay. Uh, press a number key to make your selection. And return to this menu while this. Oh, we're just gonna start having some animations. So we've got a sparkling Diet Coke thing. Okay, and that just ended it. Um, can we get bottle caps? What's that do? That just makes bottle caps drop? Okay. Okay then. And now we've got an image forming. There we go. And this is just like a bottle and a can bouncing around the screen. That's all this screensaver does. Let's move on. Okay, we can't stay here forever with screensavers. So Matthew Belshin's getting the last one, and this one's not in the comp folder, so I've got some hopes here. Win games backslash GG backslash Seascape. Have we ever had six digs in a single video? I don't think we have yet, but there's been some really basic stuff today, so I gotta fill out some time somehow. Anyways, this last one I'm hoping is gonna be good because it's in the GG folder, which is usually games. Not always, but usually. Anyways, Seascape. Um, okay, we got some DLLs, some RCS files, whatever those do. Um, we got a readme, file id.diz, what's the diz say? Seascape 2.0, Realistic Fish. Seascape is a Windows 3.1 screen save for... Oh my... The GG folder has let us down. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I don't know where this... I don't, I don't have any idea how I'm going to title this video at this point. <laughs> Uh, okay, so it's another screensaver. Hopefully we can just run it as it is, but we've got like four executables. Not exactly sure which one to run. And we got this readme here. Um, does this actually say what to run? Okay, that's just installation instructions. That doesn't help. Although I do like that in the license agreement here, you get 120 days to try out the screensaver as opposed to just 30 <laughs> before you're supposed to pay for it or remove it from your system. And apparently the registration fee is $10. So that's suitable if it's a good screensaver. But let's see here. Oh wait, this was just a discount. I'm looking down here and it looks like that the actual registration fee is $15 and $20 if you actually want a disc to come with it. For, apparently from a company called Advanced Computer Tectonics. With Tectonics spelled incorrectly to make it seem more tech savvy or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so there's either going to be a Seascape EXE or a Seasfish.exe, which seems to be the file that we need to run. Um, we kind of have both of them. Let's try the unable to access main windows. What about this one? Oh, this is just information about fish. Okay, let's do a proper install then. Go to setup, see install. Okay, agrees. Win see windows. First and last names. Really? Really? There, that's my name. Happy? Uh, successfully installed. Let's go to the thing. I actually found a name in here. Alan Walworth is the person responsible for Seascape. And then we can access documentation, which just brings up pretty much the stuff we already saw in that one file. We got about the fish, which was that one executable thing. You can either make a copy, license status, register or order. There's advanced configuration, which doesn't seem that advanced. Anyways, let's see it. To be fair, 
the fish are at least eating the little food pellets. But this is apparently worth $15 back in the mid-90s. Actually, to be even extra fair, one of the things I've gone over before is that the entire point of a screensaver is to save the screen, to prevent things like burn-in and stuff. And this screensaver is as basic as it looks, would actually do that because it doesn't look there's no um continually repeating or still images on the screen and it's otherwise totally black so as a screensaver this actually works to save the screen and hey we actually have different kinds of fish it's not just the uh, um i don't actually know what kind of fish any of these are i know it said so in the documentation but i wasn't really paying that much attention so yeah, like, I mean, if this was worth $15 to someone in the fort in the 19, 1994 or whatever, then sure, go for it. But again, this is very basic for what it does for something that you're paying that much money for. So I, although I, I guess that's the other thing too, is that screensavers were kind of a big deal back then. You like, you could buy like in packages that were just brimming with the stuff with like hundreds of screensavers even i even have such a package which i've never shown on any of my videos just because of the fact that one i don't have a don't have the di any real good way to get the contents of the discs off and two last i checked half the screensavers didn't work even back on period correct hardware so it was like it was like a cheapo you, you know how there was that after dark screensaver package well we had the um <laughs> Or okay, better than that. Better than that. You know the meme where someone says they want like Doom or something like that, and it's, or something like Crisis or Quake or whatever. They want something that's like, well, we have that at home, and then they show like this much worse version. Well, that's what it's like for me. I I if if I wanted After Dark, well, we have After Dark at home would be the answer because what we have is not After Dark. <laughs> It was not after dark, and it was just like a hundred screensavers, half of which worked, and half of which didn't, and the half which did work barely did. So, anyways, I think I'm done here. Let's just call it a video.